The draft is right around the corner. Do the Devils hold on to that pick or do they trade it away? Tom Fitzgerald recently spoke to NHL.com to give his thoughts. And he also talked about the goalie market and gave an update on Jack Hughes. Lots to dissect in today's episode of Locked On Devils. Buckle up, everybody. Your Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play play announcer, Devils Wire for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. Our buddy, Mike Moriel of NHL.com, recently published an episode talking about Tom Fitzgerald and his mindset heading into the offseason. Moriel had the chance to ask Fitzy a couple questions and Fitzy touched on the 10th overall pick in this year's NHL draft, which is a few weeks away. He talked about the goalie market, his mindset heading into it. And he also gave us an update regarding Jack Hughes and his injury circumstance. As we all know, Jack Hughes' season was cut short yet again because he had to get shoulder surgery. And ever since then, he's been a little radio silent. He didn't conduct an exit interview because he was already back in Michigan recovering from surgery that he had in Colorado, I believe. And finally, Fitzy gave Devils fans something to get their hopes up about because it's projected that Jack Hughes should be ready to go by training camp if all goes well. But let's begin with the 10th overall pick because that's been a big talking point amongst the Devils discourse. It's been a big talking point on my show. Moriel asked Fitzy, would he consider trading away the 10th overall pick? And here's what Fitzy had to say. He said, quote, if we feel like it helps us now and in the foreseeable future, then yes, I'm listening. I haven't forgotten anything yet, but the more I talk to teams, I say, listen, I'm open to moving the number 10 pick, but it's going to have to be something significant. And a lot of people are curious, what would Fitzgerald trade the number 10 pick for? Would it be a top-notch forward? Would it be a defenseman? Would it be a goalie? Because the Devils need help in all three categories in different ways. I've touched on it on my show before, but just to reiterate, they need some more depth in terms of offense to replace Miles Wood and Michael McLeod. Decent two-way play, but someone who's not afraid to play physical and someone who could be a little more efficient than Curtis McDermott. On the defensive side of things, they're way too soft. They need a grittier defenseman and someone who's a little more defensive-minded. Uh, some players that come to mind are like Damon Severson or Ryan Graves. They're one of the more underrated pieces as to why the Devils had a historic season. And goaltending, it's a complete mess, but we'll talk more about that in segment two. And if you recall, 11 years ago, if you could believe it, the Devils traded away their ninth overall pick to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for Corey Schneider. We know how that saga turned out, but people are still curious. Would the Devils entertain that thought once again? Because people are saying, like, if the Devils get a decent goalie, maybe they'll be an even better team. Here's what Fitzgerald had to say. Quote, does the number 10 pick get you that type of player that you can add to the group? It's easy to say, go get so-and-so, and and then you build from there. But there are some guys who have different contracts, so how are those players going to reprice that? There's a lot to it, but yes, the focus is on finding that goaltender. Okay, there's uh, quite a bit to dissect here, and I split it up to three parts. Question number one, should the Devils trade the pick? And I've talked about it in a previous episode. Personally, I think they should trade away that pick because they had the second overall pick a couple years ago, and that became Simo Nemitz. And during that time, who was available? Kevin Fiala was available. Matthew Kachuk, it seemed like he wanted out of Calgary. Alex DeBrincat, he was available. There were a decent amount of options for the Devils to try to trade away their second overall pick. And Ryan Novozinski of NJ.com, 
he appeared on this show a couple summers ago, and he he said that there was some tire kicking when it came to trade discussions surrounding the second overall pick. Obviously, nothing came into fruition, but Fitzgerald was just entertaining the thought a little bit. Now, fast forward a couple years later, the Devils are in a different circumstance. They already have some of their impactful players. They already have a core established. And the big thing for them is that they just need to get healthy. But it doesn't hurt to add a little bit more firepower. I personally think they should trade away that pick and see who you could potentially get. No, they will not get Brady Kachuk. And know that 10th overall pick, more likely than not, in a one-for-one -one deal is not going to get you the impactful player that you have in mind. But if you package it in some sort of deal, like if you add a few prospects here and there, if you add, say, an Alexander Holtz just for, for argument's sake, then maybe you can get a decent return. But we're going to have to see who's available, and I'll touch on that momentarily. It can also mean nothing because similar to what I just said moments ago, Devils had the second overall pick. And even though Fitzgerald was open to trading it away, even after it became the second overall pick at the conclusion of the draft lottery, it didn't seem like the Devils were gaining any traction. And Novo even said that he wasn't sure as to how close the Devils were to actually trading it away. But there was some interest there. And I don't want people to jump the gun on anything. Just because Fitzgerald is entertaining the thought doesn't mean it's going to come into fruition. Don't get your hopes too high, but don't get your hopes too low either. When it comes to trades, there's always different circumstances. A player doesn't want to be a part of the organization anymore. Teams want to just unload on some contracts. Teams know that they have no shot of contending next year or showing that much sign of improvement. So they want to try to get rid of some of those assets and see what they could get while the price is relatively high. And you're just going to have to wait and see. And similar to what happened a couple years ago, you're going to have to just anticipate who might be available because we had to wait a few weeks before the draft. We saw that Kevin Fiala and Alex DeBrincat, more likely than not, were going to be out of their current situation. Then a little deeper into the summer, it didn't seem like the relationship between Calgary and Kachuk was going all that well. And as a result, he got dealt to the Panthers. Every trade circumstance is a little bit different. I'd say one of the biggest trades that the Devils made within the last year or so was getting Tyler Toffoli and Timo Meyer. Toffoli revealed that he did want to extend with Calgary, but they didn't seem all that interested. And he just wanted to avoid the inevitable and just get out of there. Same with Timo Meyer. I think the Sharks were interested in re-signing Timo Meyer, but it didn't seem like the love was reciprocal. And Mike Greer knew that, and he had to unload on Timo Meyer, who was set to become a restricted free agent in about a year or so. And now Toffoli is in Winnipeg for a time being, and Timo is still on the Devils long term. Trades are interesting. And the big question is, going back to the second quote I read, should the Devils do a one-for-one -one deal and get a goalie? Who's available? Jacob Markstrom, the two goalies out in Boston, UC Soros, John Gibson, Elvis Merz Lincolns, basically names that have been touched upon prior to the trade deadline. Could they make their could one of those goalies make their way to New Jersey? I think the Devils are interested in Jacob Markstrom and they're waiting to see how that relationship between him and Calgary unfolds a little bit more. Rumors are saying that Markstrom is not the happiest of campers in Calgary due to how they've been handling his trade circumstance. And Elvis Mers Lincolns also said to the media that he wanted out of Columbus. There's so much that could happen. But I would just express caution. Don't jump the gun on trading away the 10th overall pick for a goalie. Because one of the things I always say when it comes to making a trade is that you have to look at it as an investment. How many more years can Jacob Markstrom in his mid-30s give you? Whereas if you were to draft, say, Cole Iserman, Iserman hasn't even entered the NHL yet. 
and he could give you 10 years of service for all I know. That's my thing, which is I think the Devils have learned their lesson after the Corey Schneider fiasco because he got off to a really good start, but unfortunately injuries plagued him and it kind of derailed his time in New Jersey and the Devils had to let him go for nothing. That's my thing. I'm a little hesitant when it comes to trading away that pick for a goalie. And I think Tom Fitzgerald also realizes that. And he says that it has to be big. He's not just going to get a decent player for the 10th overall pick. Teams are going to have to pay up. The big thing is what assets do the Devils have to give up in a trade circumstance? And we're going to talk about that momentarily. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about FanDuel. It's winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com and remember to gamble responsibly. Okay. Let's look at what Tom Fitzgerald had to say about the goalie market. Because when it comes to finding a good goalie, it's a little spread thin. And Fitzgerald realizes that. He was quoted to say, I'm in the goalie market talking to teams, but there's a but. And the but is, how do we want to build our team? We'd like to add up front. We'd like to add on the back end. So what are those pieces going to cost us? With the goaltending, what's going to cost us? Basically, what Fitzgerald is saying is like, similar to what I said in the previous episode, that getting a big name goalie is not a guaranteed ticket to the Stanley Cup final. Look at the Florida Panthers, for example. Sergei Bobrovsky, yes, he has won two Vesna trophies. He has appeared in all-star games. And he makes crucial saves at the right moment. I've been seeing it on full display during the playoffs. But similar to what I said in the previous episode, that entire Panthers team, they know what it takes to win. Matthew Kachuk, someday I think he can uh, win the Hart Trophy. He put up 100-plus points last year. Or Alexander Barkov, he won the Norris this season. So your offense and your defense is also covered, and you have good goaltending. Whereas for the Oilers, they have great offense. I cannot deny that. But their defense and their goaltending leads me to wonder, how much further can they go in the Stanley Cup final? And this is hockey. Upsets happen all the time. But the thing is, like, there's only so much that a good goalie can do because if you don't have a good defense in front of them, their good efforts could go to waste. That's the thing. And when looking at the Devils, Mike Moriel touched on this in his article. The narrative for the Devils is that ever since Fitzgerald took over office, it's been musical chairs. It's been a revolving door in terms of finding the right goalie for New Jersey. They have been through 12 different goalies. Some that come to mind, Mackenzie Blackwood, Vitek Vancheck, Akira Schmidt, Nico Dawes, uh, I can go on, but you get the point that the Devils have had a goaltending issue for a few years, and they need some steady goaltending. And I just don't think a tandem of Capo Kakinen and Jake Allen is going to get you far in the playoffs. I think that could be a decent regular season tandem, but with that tandem, can you beat a team four times out of seven, which is what the requirement is come playoff time. When it comes to goalies, the market is spread thin, similar to what I said just a few minutes ago. And opposing teams can make you be at their mercy. When looking at the Devils roster currently, who are some assets that they can package in to potentially get a goalie? I mean, people want to get rid of Andre Palat, but the thing is, is like he's guaranteed three more seasons and he has a cap hit of $6 million. You're not going to get rid of him. I don't think anyone wants to get rid of Eric Halla. He has two years remaining on his contract. Kersel Zarb, same thing. I don't think anyone wants to get rid of him. He has one year remaining on his contract. 
Alexander Holtz, maybe, depending on the asking price. Dawson Mercer is a pending RFA, but I said it a few weeks ago. I don't think you should put Dawson Mercer in any trade discussions. I think he has potential to grow. Nathan Bastian, I, I, I don't think so either. It, basically, the Devils are in a very peculiar situation, which is like, do they have the assets to trade for a top-notch goalie? That's the big question. You want those two, one of those two goalies out in Boston, UC Soros, Jacob Markstrom, John Gibson, Elvis Merz Lincolns, you name it. I get it. But the thing is, like, what do what do the devils have to give up in order to get that goalie? If they give up Luke Hughes or Nemitz, I don't think that helps them in the long run. Same with Marino. It's just like you need more defense. You need all the defensive bodies you could potentially get because that's already a weakness for New Jersey. I don't think that makes them any better, quite honestly. When it comes to the goaltending situation, obviously Tom Fitzgerald, he's much smarter than me in that regard. I'm sure he'll make the right move. But just to, just to give you that sort of reference, the Devils might have to get rid of a top-notch prospect in order to entice a team to give them a goalie. Who's that top prospect going to be? I don't really know. But if you can maybe get a B or a C tier prospect and maybe one roster player that's not going to kill you, doesn't seem like the organization likes Alexander Holtz anyway. Doesn't seem like he's going to be given the role that he deserves. We'll see what happens. But just to give you that sort of reference, it's going to be rather difficult for the Devils to trade for a top-notch goalie. And I believe they could do so, but the road, it's going to be a little bumpy in my eyes. And I don't know if Tom Fitzgerald is serious about incorporating the number 10 pick. James Nichols of New Jersey Hockey Now, he actually put this out on social media that he also doesn't believe that Fitzy is going to entertain that thought. But we'll see what happens. And things are going to get interesting this offseason for New Jersey. I can definitely feel it. All right, to close out today's episode, let's get an update regarding Jack Hughes and his shoulder surgery. Fitzy was quoted to say, his range of motion is not completely full, but he's doing a lot of things off ice. He's working out to gain strength, a lot of plyometrics. He's really excited and is looking forward to getting to the gym every day, get stronger, and that's music to my ears. What's the kid going to be like when he puts on another 10 pounds of muscle? All right, I didn't really do an episode centered around Jack and his season because I sort of touched on it when I was discussing his injury. And ever since then, we didn't really talk much about Jack Hughes. He's not really on social media, and he's gone a little radio silent for the most part. But getting that update from Tom Fitzgerald is great. And I just want to say one or two things. One, Jack really needs to work on getting healthy he needs to work on just having a full season because the biggest what if so far in his career what could he accomplish if he just doesn't get injured and i get it that sometimes if you just avoid injury you're lucky but jack has to similar to what fitzgerald said gain 10 pounds of muscle 10 pounds of something because he does get moved off the puck a little bit too often and this has been an issue ever since he was drafted. Jack is a very skilled player, but we kind of saw him go from phenomenal to somewhat human on the rink. And I, I get it. He, he is a human, but you get the analogy or the hyperbole, however you want to put it. Jack had to move off of his natural position at center to a winger position. And sometimes he just looked a tad bit slow. He couldn't use his, his own strength to his advantage which was his speed because it seems like he was not at a hundred percent. And that was somewhat obvious. And there was questions as to whether or not he might need surgery or something like that. And lo and behold, he did get it. I think it, once he does become healthy, I think, it, and he does gain that weight, hopefully we could see a better improved Jack Hughes and he can just elevate his game to the next level. What will he be like if he gains 10 pounds of muscle? Well, I think he'll definitely be 
harder to move off the puck. I'll just say that. And he 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 needs to know that he's no longer an underrated player. That's my thing. Is once the Devils showed that they can be a threat, you saw less teams use their backup goalie, but you also saw more teams get physical with them. Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, you name it. Anything to get underneath their skin. And a lot of it happened before Curtis McDermott joined the roster. Two things for Jack Hughes. This season is going to be vital for him because I genuinely believe he can become an MVP caliber player. We saw it during the month of October. And unfortunately, come the first week of November, that's when he sustained his first shoulder injury against the St. Louis Blues. And then, similar to what Fitzy said, can Hughes gain 10 pounds of muscle? So that way he can be a bit of a harder target to move off the puck. That's my thing. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think about the 10th overall pick? Should the Devils hold on to it? Should they trade it away? Who are some of your targets for the goalie market? And give me your quick thoughts on Jack Hughes and what you anticipate from him this upcoming year. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.